Hello and welcome to the Two Ball Brothers in a Microphone podcast. This is your host, Danny Ryan. I'm here with my other host, Tommy Ryan. How are you doing, Tommy? I'm doing well. Yeah. It's a beautiful day today. The, the rain has kind of settled down, but yeah. I've, the garden has loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm planting my fall seeds uh-huh. and having all this rain is making my life a lot easier to <laughs> kind of keep up with the garden. So what are you harvesting right now? What's coming out? Tomatoes are right at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm harvesting a lot of field peas. I've never done this before, but mm-hmm. um, black eyed peas are one type of field pea. Mm-hmm. But um, Texas cream and lady cream field peas. Okay. And they're really good. They're real tasty. Um, and I harvested a bunch of butternut squash, um, something like 20 pounds of butternut squash. Wow. Yeah. 20 pounds? Yeah. Woo! Good. I know it's going to be in the office now. <laughs> <laughs> nice thing about uh, the winter squash is it uh-huh. keeps. Okay. And and I didn't realize this or really think about it, but you've got summer squ- squash and winter squash. And you would think, oh, you grow your winter squash in the fall, but you actually grow it in the same time as summer squash. It's uh-huh. just it lasts through the winter. And that, it's got hard skin. Okay. And that's your winter squashes like acorn squash, spaghetti squash, butternut squash, pumpkin, things like that. Nice. Are you growing pumpkins? I've got pumpkin, but only two that are growing. Okay. okay. Um, that didn't do so well, but um, I have at least one really nice looking one and one that's got a little bit of bug attack to it. But Oh. So for folks who haven't listened to the last couple of podcasts, this is about Iron Mountain Organics, Tommy's venture into creating um, a new movement, I'll call it that. That's right. Which is getting back to growing your own food and um, getting to uh, get back to real things like that and knowing knowing thy food know thy food is that that's right? right yeah cool. that's, that's the tagline did uh, did Craig um, Craig got our feedback yes I got an email yesterday he's work he's been working on rev three round mm-hmm. three and he should be done tonight so I'm excited to see can't what wait comes. to see it yeah that's awesome. And uh, so today what I wanted to do is we just had our last meeting on our last lunch and learn or our last book club meeting on hit refresh. So uh, as with normal things with me, I start off strong and then towards the end, I just sort of fall off. So <laughs> we've gotten through the first couple of, we've done a couple of, uh, of chapters and we spent uh some uh, some good time sort of digging into things um, with the book and I mean part of what I really loved about this book was getting to know his background and what who you know sort of where does he come from yeah and understand the person and that helps you know that for leaders I just think it's so important to be authentic I think it's so important to be yourself and um, one of the the things I was looking for from this book more than anything was just getting to know who the person was. Right. And so I think um, that really came out uh, towards the beginning phases. And then, honestly, you know, <laughs> once we get starting uh, talking about uh, quantum, com- quantum computing and AI and stuff like that, I just sort of, my eyes haze over and I start thinking about, you know, what are we doing today? And I know all this stuff is coming. And I know it's important that Microsoft stays ahead of things. But um, I just see so many opportunities today to... to especially within the collaboration space and, and yeah. that, that it's, I'm not like, let's nail this stuff that's right, right in front of us. Yeah. Think about doing um, an intranet on Office 365. Is it, it's, it's not that easy. It, it, is it? Not, it, <laughs> it involves quantum computing yeah. and AI. Oh, jeez. But I mean, I'm in just being in the middle of it, you know, with uh, project cobbler, which is what we're calling our, our internal um, project for how we're using Office 365 and, and it's just it's not it's not easy and it's I don't think it's um, we haven't nailed it so I I don't like moving on I mean I, in a way I don't like moving on to other things and new technologies until we feel like we've got a good handle on what's available today and um, fortunately Microsoft has the resources to go after what's coming in the future and to to dream up what is coming and that's yes. a lot of this book is is him you know projecting into the future about um, important things like um, the future with the ai and what's coming down the pipe 
But um, and that, and to some people might say that's that's happening today. But but I just I, I, part of this was I think it's sort of I started getting lost in the words towards the end. Just well, I, just and I I think AI you know it's been there since you know yeah what, when we were born. I mean the yeah. <laughs> artificial intelligence mm-hmm. and things like it used to be called and, and this is not exactly the same, but it's very related. Is yeah. neural networks? I mean that technology I, I remember talking about that in college yeah. um so it's it, with a lot of things it's rebranding the same concepts yeah. and trying to push it a little bit further well, i took i took a lisp in, at georgia tech yeah so i remember the cons of the cutter there it was just a crazy um, i thought you uh, talked kind of funny yeah unless <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is the language tommy <laughs> uh do you have a lisp um yeah. But yeah, so it's, but, and I think the, what I wanted to do um, for this conversation is maybe talk about some of the takeaways that you took, took from reading the book um, and what, you know, what is that, how does this relate to us? Cause I'm, I'm just constantly trying to think of, okay, what does this mean to me? What do I, what is this taking away? What does this mean to a small Microsoft partner like us? Yeah. Um, some of these things that are, are in the book. Um, and how does this, you know, uh, rediscovering yourself, we've been in business for quite a while as well. And this path to re- rediscovering yourself, I think, uh, happens often with us. It's sort of mm-hmm. like, what, what do we start this all off for? What are we doing here? Right. Where am I? <laughs> yeah, where, where am, am I? I? <laughs> where am I? <laughs> um, and so I think it's, it's good for a lot of companies uh, who've been in business for a while to hit refresh. Mm-hmm. Um, and a part of it is, is coming back to what's, what's your background? Where did you come, you know, what's your, where, what sort of, what was the original intent for why the company, why did you start this company? And right. so I think that this book reminded me of that. Um, and so I think that, that was important. So as far as like the, um, big takeaways, maybe let's start going through some of those that, that you yeah. have from the book. What were, what was one that sort of first comes to mind? The, the big one for me is getting to know the person, Satya Nadella, that the first part of the book um, uh-huh. didn't know about his son that was special needs. Yeah. Um, really didn't know he was wanting to be a cricket player and that was his <laughs> goal in life. And mm-hmm. um, the, the type of background that he came from, the type of parents. Um, and, it, you know, they always say you, you're not, when you choose, um, a customer or, or a customer chooses you or a partner chooses another partner, it's not always the technology. It's not always the, quote, capability. Yeah. It's the DNA and the people behind that. Mm-hmm. And to me, that refreshes, I think, our commitment to Microsoft knowing the person that mm-hmm. is in charge to steer the ship. So, you know, learning more about him, you kind of felt that already, you know, just from how he spoke and, and the activities he was involved in early on um, as he uh, became, you know, the, the CEO. Um, but reading the book gave a little bit more of the background of, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that ties into the things that I've seen him do. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that was a big takeaway um, for me, I think. Um, the, the other one is um, trying that there's a lot of work towards changing the mindset of Microsoft. Um, the empathy is, is the key thing that he reinforced in the book. And I think his view of this is more of a heterogeneous world that we're in. It's not a Microsoft-centric world. Um, and that we're here to provide value in that ecosystem and we don't always have to own it end to end. You know, there's some companies that kind of take that attitude of we've got to control the whole experience. I think that that extreme is kind of like an apple. Mm-hmm. And then there's, you know, a services kind of plumbing type organization like Microsoft that I think, um, and you know, in a sense, they're still sticking to that. That's been the theme, you know, from almost the get go. Um, it's from their origin story of being an OS company mm-hmm. that has evolved into productivity and server and now cloud mobility 
type solutions and architecture. Mm -hmm. um, so that, uh, you know, I, I kind of took away that there's kind of the same Microsoft, but they're um, a Microsoft that uh, values the person more. I think there's there's more of that in in the um, in the drive of the organization. There's still going to be a lot of the things that kind of come with being a very large company and trying to hold that together. Mm -hmm. But the person in charge, I think, is uh, making sure it's more than just that. Um, and that it, 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 there is a personal component that makes Microsoft Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And it's not just all the things that they do, but the who they are as an organization. Mm -hmm. So I took those things away. And in and, and the future stuff, looking at AI and quantum computing, mm -hmm. you know, I, I saw that more as we're looking for what's the the future going to look like you know that we're we've got to do that or, or organization we want to make sure um, we're doing things that will be of value in the future mm -hmm. um, and i you know out of i think out of most companies that are out there at the scale of microsoft microsoft probably does the best at creating continuity over time that they don't leave people behind mm -hmm. you know of course they have things that get sunset but you know they run a product for like 10 years and and then support it 10 years after its end of life um, where they kind of say we're done you know no more info path mm -hmm. um, but then you've got a a ramp down mm -hmm. that i think um, really treats the enterprise well and i think serves them well long term that enterprises have trust that Microsoft will not come up with this great idea, get me on board and then jump ship. Um, I, I, I think it's easy to get frustrated with things that they try mm -hmm. and try to get traction, but maybe don't get traction. You know, some things get traction like teams, some things don't get traction like to do, let's say. And but Microsoft puts those things out there. And when something gets traction, um, it, it feels like they stand behind it. They, they might not be creating the best mm -hmm. um, version of that, you know, um, from an innovation standpoint. But I think they're, you know, they, they've worked on making sure that they can keep it relevant as long as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think going to the cloud is is big for them, and, and it, it's turning a big ship, and and. When they, you know, I think they're at the beginning of that ship being in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's something that I think we're going to see a lot of um, benefit from the cloud being real today and customers ready for that. And the whole AI, yeah, quantum computing, you know, I try to just understand what is that mm -hmm. and don't really worry about it day to day. But it, um, be aware of it. So as we're talking to customers, we might have a sense of, you know, how does that can, you know, how does that relate to what we're doing today? Yeah. And don't get anxious because that will naturally come and Microsoft will integrate that in a way that gives you more value in what you're investing in and in infrastructure and content that that will have new features for mm -hmm. you. Those are going to be the exciting, shiny new things. Um, and But we need to focus in, like you said, what is today? What's real today? Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to solve a problem today. You're not trying to solve a problem necessarily that's 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are my main takeaways. I mean, a lot of kind of detail in between. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one last thing that they had was... You know, talking about the future and you know, how automation impacts that. And I was just talking yesterday to, to Pete and there was a comment of, oh, we're talking to other services companies and they're struggling with getting, you know, good sized projects because they're doing things in flow and in power apps and it really is a lot of the same stuff again. And, yeah. and I think we've embraced it well to say, that's great. There's going to be out of the box things, but there's always going to be a need to do it in a way beyond what tooling 
allows a power user to create. Um, and I think it, you look at, well, I could lose my job at McDonald's because they're going to automate things within the store. Um, you, you can lose your job as a developer because they're automating a lot of things that developers do. You know, mm-hmm. A lot of, you know, kind of code generation that's been out there for years yeah. to be able to, you know, use WYSIWYG tools, let's say, to, to be able to generate the code for you. That will just get better and better. Um, so I think we're all, it's not just necessarily the low end, let's say low end, and that's probably a bad way to say that, but um, the, the, the low skilled work mm-hmm. that doesn't require, let's say, a college education, um, that is, in, you know, has an uncertain future, but I think we also have an uncertain yeah. future. I mean, it's we're impacting all, both, yeah. both white collar and blue yeah, collar Yeah, I, I think it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, you just want to embrace it in a way that um, keeps the spirit of we want to add value in this world. Mm-hmm. And however we get there, we don't know. There's a lot of extreme um, and, and different ends of the spectrum of, ideas of how do you handle that when you get to that situation Mm -hmm. it was um i think the idea of of focusing in on learning being able to learn and adapt is very important yeah yeah in this world and will continue to be even you know that's you're just being able to reinvent yourself and um, being open, not having to feel like, well, I've done it this way for years and I've done this for years and, mm-hmm. um, and being open to, and hopefully grow, you know, you're growing as a person doing new, um, probably more exciting, and you know, more having different types of opportunities that you can go after. Mm-hmm. And there's two ways of looking at it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've lost my old job or I've got a great new job. Um, mm-hmm. so I think it's a part of part of that is that you, you, you it's up to the individual to make their own choice as far as the, yeah it's, it's the anxiety of the unknown yep. you know that's in front of you and it takes some courage to kind of break through that mm-hmm. over time mm-hmm. you know but that same with us I think some of the things that um, one is that I, I echo your getting to know him better and also I think there was a, a part of this that um, I was glad that he's a you know, has an engineer background, like he's mm-hmm. a problem solver. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's part of our team. Like he's not, he's mm-hmm. not trying to, he's not, you know, he, he has definitely um, is involved in sales and, you know, and all the different functions within the company. But, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have somebody who's a leader um, who, un, you know, who has, who's been in the trenches. Right. When you, I, I just think it's that's such an important thing when you look for somebody who you're looking up to that they've been there and done that, and uh, I think that was one of the things. I also one of the the um, as I look at the book and see some of the things I was amazed with was, you know, his their move from trying to go from the to the new sur, uh, subscription model of things, right? Because at first, as you and I know. Um, you're trying to do a product and okay, we're going to charge people $10 per month for this product. Yeah. We made a sale. It's like, you know, it, it, that model of moving over to a subscription based model, man, at first it looks like it just, what are we doing here? Why are we doing this? And, um, you know, making the, the 10 bucks today as opposed to $1 per month, for <laughs> forever at first looks like it's like what are we why are we doing this we're giving up nine bucks this today that we could be making today i think making that transition and them going through that transition was something important that he needed to lead the company through now it's just you know now they see it now it's all there and they're they're seeing the reoccurring revenue that's coming in and, right um it's a success but i think there's also there, there was a lot of having to uh, convince people inside of Microsoft to leave money on the table today to go after more money tomorrow. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that was, that that was uh, something that I uh, admire that they were able to do that because you have to be a forward thinking to be able to, to do that. Um, I mean, my, some of my favorite parts of the book were, uh, yeah, hearing about his son. I think that's where all the empathies, um, where a lot of that comes from and seeing how that impacted him. 
um, to see an engineer sort of have something that he can't fix. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and yeah. what do we do yeah. when when things are not playing out like we expected them to? And and how does that change you? And trying to understand someone else's perspective, I think that was that's very important because we want our leaders to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, we want them to to be able to take um, you know step aside from themselves and understand the the people that they are leading. Um, but yeah, there were the, some of the, uh, the other things that I think the, the stories were great in here. I think as a, as a, um, if I sort of relate this back to being a small Microsoft partner, I think there were some years where, um, you know, we started forming other partnerships with other companies and started doing some other stuff outside of Microsoft. Um, but this book, reading this book, I think has helped to sort of say we're, we're going in the right direction. Um, with them as a as a you know playing a very probably unique and you know a very niche role within the consulting world that we do um, but feeling good like there's um, you know they're they're a good partner for us to focus in on and uh, you know I think it's exciting I think the innovation that's going on there I mean you've got um, ignite coming up and just seeing what's coming from them with regards to collaboration and things that our clients are interested in i think they're de definitely not sitting on their hands <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's a, that's definitely a good thing i think that would be something where we would be looking you know if, if we didn't see the innovation there we would be looking at other partners and right what are we doing so um but overall good book anything any sort of last things you would uh wrap up with and i'll I'll, I have one thing here that I can go through. It's fine if you don't, but I, I wanted to wrap up with something here. No, you go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, the, the uh, right, the, so this is the last paragraph right before the afterward. Um, uh, and it's about uh, John Battelle. Wire's co-founding editor once wrote that business is humanity's most resilient, iterative, and productive mechanism for creating change in the world. And then he says, he's right. And we business need, leaders need to take seriously our responsibility uh, abilities as change leaders. I don't say this for the purpose of so-called corporate social responsibility, which is important, but can also serve as little more than good PR. I say it because a better world is better for business. It's important to be dedicated to creating great products, serving customers and earning profits for our investors but it's not sufficient. We also need to think about the impact of our actions on the world and its citizens long into the future. Cool. Good, Good. way to end. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for doing this, Tommy. Thank you, yeah, everybody, sure. for listening. And uh, we'll see what the next book is in the book club and um, continue. We'll want to do one after you go to Ignite. Maybe we uh, have a conversation beforehand before heading out there. And then you also have a you're doing a little road trip coming up here, right? Road trip to uh, Texas. Oh, to I Texas. Believe, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, what yeah, are you talking yeah about? Road trip. Yeah. Road trip. Yeah. Where, where am I going? <laughs> So you're heading out to Dallas and to Austin, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's the beginning of September? Yes. First week in September. Cool. Cool. We'll have to do, uh, skip that week and then catch up the week after. See how Sounds good. Work. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a wonderful day. All Take right. care. Bye-bye.